here from Steve's Internet Guide and in this video I'm going to take you through understanding and using the JavaScript MQTT client uh, with WebSockets. Now the, the client runs in the web browser and it runs as part of a web page so the first thing you have to do is to create a, a basic web page and I've got a diagram of the basic web page structure below and when my, I create the scripts, I'm going to create the scripts as simple as possible. I'm going to use very basic HTML and I'm going to use very basic JavaScript. And uh, we're going to use as little of, of both uh, as possible. Now, it starts off with an uh, opening HTML and it finishes up with a closing HTML. We have the header section, which was, is going to contain most of our JavaScript. It's going to contain the, the script functions, and they're enclosed in the script tags you can see here. Uh, we have some style tags, which I'm not using in, the, in this video. I will use them later on. And then we have our body underneath, and the body is going to contain HTML, and it's going to contain the uh, a little script. Basically, it's got uh, a call to a function which runs the, the script and that's going to be very very basic okay so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate WebSockets using the JavaScript client so we're going to create a very simple client that publishes and subscribes to a topic and it receives data and displays the data it receives as I say we're keeping the HTML simple and we're not using jQuery uh, in the second video, which I'll do later on, we're going to create a more advanced client and we're going to be using forms and we're going to be using events. And, and in the set second video, we're going to create something that looks like this, um, where we can enter the server name, port number, connect, and then we can enter the subscribe topic and subscribe, and we can enter the message and then we can publish the message. Uh, let's say that's for the second video. In this video, we get to keep it nice and simple and create a very, very basic um, implementation using the JavaScript client. Okay, this is a, a screenshot of the client, and what we've got at the top is we've got our HTML, and you can see the HTML at the bottom. And remember, I said we're going to keep it very, very simple. If we look down here in the main body, and we've just got a simple call that calls the function if you can see there mqtt connect and that calls the connect function which connects to the mqtt broker and i'm running my own internal mosquito broker here and i'm doing that so i can actually show you what it looks like on the broker as well as on the client side okay most of our code is in the header section and it's enclosed in these script tags and it's there now it starts off with a call that brings in the mqtt client you can see it here now i'm using the one on the web um, which means that the i need an internet connection to pull in this client now if you haven't got an internet connection then you need to download the client and install it locally um, on your machine it's just a simple file which you just copy into a directory on your machine and then you adjust the path to pick it up okay now the script starts with declaring a few variables and you can see them there and it consists of uh, two functions it consists of a, a connect function and an on connect function now there's the on connect function there in pink and there's the connect function here and I call it the salmon color, orangey color at the bottom. Now, it starts off with a call here to this connect function here. Now, this connect function is responsible for creating the connection to the uh, MQTT broker. And as part of the connect function, what it does is it defines an on-connect callback. And you can see that definition here, on success, Call the on connect for callback. So what happens is, I call the connect function. The connect function connects to the broker. When the connection succeeds, it then triggers this on connect uh, callback here. And all this on connect callback does is logs a message, and there's the logging of the message, and then it actually sends a message, which is does here. 
Now, because you can't subscribe to a topic or you, and you can't publish to a topic until you actually connect to the broker and that broker that connection has to be successful, then you'll find a lot of scripts incorporate the publish and they incorporate the subscribe as part of the on, the on connect function. So once we've got into this on connect function, we know we've connected. So we're safe to subscribe and we're safe to publish. Now all I've done here is I've published the message. You you should see here that there is a subscribe call there which I've commented out so I'm not using that in this in this first script. So what this script is going to do is going to connect to the broker, it's going to log a message. Once the connection is successful, it's then going to call the on connect callback. The on connect callback is going to log a message saying it's connected and then it's going to publish a message there and it's finished. That's all it's going to do. Oh, before I run this script, I just want to show you something, something that got me a bit stumped because I, I'm not a, a JavaScript expert. I'm very new to it. Um, I did use it a long time ago and I'm just starting to use it again. Now, I started using document.write, which is down here. Here it is here, and you can see I've commented it out. Now, a word of warning, don't use it. Um, it, it tends to hang the script. Um, I'm not actually sure why. Um, I, I will find out at one stage, but the important thing is don't use it. I've commented that out. Uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use the console log, which is that one there, to output any messages, which means we have to enable the console, and I'll show you how to do that in the Firefox browser in a second. Okay, so don't use the document.write. Okay, then let's go on and we'll, we'll run this script and see what it does. Okay, here's a script here. I've called it WebSockets1.htm, and we don't need a web browser, sorry, a web server to run this script. It's just in a, a directory on my Windows PC, and all I'm going to do is double-click it. It should open up with Firefox, and it will run. And you can see nothing's really happen there. Now what we need to do to see anything is we need to enable the console so we go to tools, web developer and web console and we see a window down there. Now it's showing you that it's connecting and connected so let's run it again. To run it again we simply just refresh the page and you can see there it's connecting to my broker and it's connected. Now let me show you what the broker saw Okay, here we are at the broker. You can see here we've got a new client connected, and that's my JavaScript client. It sends a connection acknowledgement and it received a, a publish. Now, notice here that it's actually receiving a ping request and a ping response. Now, the JavaScript client behaves quite differently to the Python client, which is the one I'm more familiar with. Now, with a Python client, you have to run your own loop. Um, with a JavaScript client, it basically sits in the loop until you close the the web page. So, this just go back to my client. This web page here, even though it doesn't appear to be doing anything, which it isn't. In the background, the client's still connected to the server and it's going to send the ping request and get the ping response back from the server. So it's still running in the background. I haven't started any loop. It's started automatically when I connect to the, to the broker. Okay, so very simple script to connect to the broker and publish a message. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change that script. We're going to change the script so we... Um, subscribe to the broker and we're going to ex publish a message and we're going to also capture the receive message and we're going to display the receive message. So what I'm going to do is go and edit the, the main script and I need to add a couple of functions to it and I need to add a couple of callbacks. Now the first thing I need to add here is an on message arrived. Now this is going to capture the, the receive message and what I forgot to mention is that originally we didn't account for a connection failure so I want to do that so I created an on failure callback which is here 
so it's part of the variable options when I do the connect so here you see the options and you can see when I connect I use those options so now I'm going to create an on failure function and I'm going to create an on message arrive function and here they are here now on failure all I, all I do is log a message it's a connection failed and then I reconnect I try to reconnect after a timeout I reconnect now the timeout you can see it here is sorry it's not there it's actually further up I'll show you that later on it's a it's a different timeout value so the on failure is going to log a message and then try reconnecting after a, a, a suitable period the on message arrived now what that's going to do is extract the the message so it's going to extract it here that using this message dot payload and it's going to extract the topic message dot destination name and it's going to log the, the the payload and the topic to the to the console you can see here with the console dot log okay this is my second script here now I'm just going to open this up in um, notepad plus just to show you the the scripts again and you can see here there's the reconnect timeout that I, I spoke about so it's two seconds and there's my on failure function there's my on message arrive function there's my on connect function and this time in the on connect I'm also going to subscribe here there it is there so I've uncommented that on uh, MQTT subscribe so what should happen now is I connect to the broker if it fails then I log a message and I try I retry the connection if it succeeds I, I hit the on connect function the on connect function subscribes it also then publishes the message sorry there and it publishes the message on the same topic that I subscribed on which is sensor one you can see the, the topics there they're the, they're the same when I when I receive the publish from the broker then it should trigger the on message arrive function which should log the message and it should log the topic okay so let's run it so open it up and it runs automatically again I need to view the console you can see here it's connected to the broker got the went into the on connect function connected and then it published and you can see here it's received the message message received hello world and on the topic sensor one okay let's go and have a look at the so this is what I see on the on the broker I get a connection I send a connection acknowledge I receive a subscribe I send a subscribe acknowledge I receive a publish and I send the publish I send the the message back to the client because of this subscribe call here okay so that's very simple how to send and receive a message using the JavaScript client over WebSockets just to finish off uh, some resources you might find useful over on the site um, this tutorial is available as in a written form in, in, uh, on the site using JavaScript MQTT clients with WebSockets there's also a tutorial on MQT and WebSockets if you don't understand um, how, how that works and there is a, actually a video on MQTT and WebSockets and I'll put a link in the description below now if you've got any comments on the video then use the comment form below if you like the video then don't forget to use the like button below if you want to be informed of new videos then you can always subscribe to the channel on the site there is a, a newsletter subscription form and I do publish uh, the occasional newsletter usually once a, a month um, and I do do updates usually weekly on on new stuff okay that's the end of this video until next time bye